Shark movies are getting out of hand, goddammit. We're talking like Sharknado. Sharknado 2, 3, 4, Six-Headed Shark, Shark Side of the Moon. If you haven't checked it out, we did a video on Shark Side of the Moon. It's on the YouTube channel. And the list goes on and on and on. Now, I do enjoy these low-budget masterpieces. Look at this magnificent poster. If there's one thing about B-movies is that their posters are always so good. Most of their budget goes to these. So what is Sharkula about? Count Dracula is chased to the ocean shores where townsfolk finally slay him with a wooden stake or a machete or something. Dracula corpse falls into the sea, but he's still alive. And they've killed him, they think. Dracula then passes on his curse to a great white shark, becoming Sharkula. Dracula still alive is now the minion of this new Count Sharkula. Can't make this up. And they have taken over a small oceanside town, claiming the lives of tourists with their bloodsuckers cult. John and Arthur, who are like the two main people of this story, get a job in this town, but find out that there's something isn't quite right about working in this small town. Something's going on and they need to figure it out. This movie was actually really hard to watch, not because of the premise, but it was the weird ass low frame rate that this movie was filmed in giving it like a slow, blurry feel to it. Why did they do this? I have no idea. But I commend the director to actually trying to make a, uh, a Dracula shark movie hybrid. This movie also includes, it's a vampire shark, a shark with wings, cults. I like cults. Am I stoned or this movie just very blurry? That's a solid Forrest Gump impression. Stock footage, stock footage, everywhere that dude loves to smell panties and of course shark attacks plenty of shark attacks quite a few kills in this low budget movie which kind of surprised me so let's jump into the first kill shall we so there's this random drunk dude walking across the docks very drunk clearly distraught from what dracula has done to his beloved little seaside town i hate this town and i hate you vladimir asshole Deep down below the water though, Sharkula lurks, flying across the ocean with its giant wings. I don't know why the shark has wings, but apparently it does. I guess it's because like a hybrid Sharkula. I don't know, it makes no sense, but we're gonna roll with it anyways. Drunk is all sin, he is unaware of Sharkula kind of peering at him with hungry eyes, ready to eat him. Not happy with what's being said, Sharkula jumps out of the water, bites his neck and then drags him into the ocean devouring him. Mmm, delicious. Now I'm convinced that Sharkula was not a fan of this guy's flamingo shirt. Bad fashion killed him maybe? What I enjoyed about this scene is I couldn't believe what I was watching at first. The drunk guy is so funny. Very Oscar worthy performance. Town, when you got here with your rules and your- And the kill is so low budget that it made it so good, like so bad, but so good at the same time. Could they have made this better? I guess they could have used like more fake blood or a fake arm or a head or something. You know, just hit up the dollar store, grab some parts, some fake blood, some mustard, or not mustard, ketchup, and just really lean into the low budget if you're gonna do something like this. They're using what I would imagine is a shark puppet eating the guy, I'm pretty sure it's the puppet. So why not go fully corny and use some fake limbs? Maybe some blood splatter on the dock. More blood is always good. I'm gonna have to go with you guys and rate this. Two bloody slashes out of five. One for the kill and then another for the flamingo shirt because that is just a bitchin' shirt and I really like it. I know, what are your thoughts? How would you make this better? Do let me know. Dracula has been feasting on the townsfolk. Well, not just Dracula, but him and Sharkula. In his basement, Dracula has one of the civilians tied up with some weird on a wire or socks or something. She is to be offered to Sharkula to please the sea beast. I too serve the master. You will be given to it. Now she's brought down to the waterfront by Dracula and I think his blood cult that also worship this Sharkula thing. John and Arthur are the two main actors in this movie. See this from their window. Hey, come over here and take a look at this. And they're not sure what to make of it. They're not sure what's happening. Just some small town folks doing small town things maybe. And then we are hit with some weird vampires screaming into the camera. 
and some like fire dancing lady. It's all stock footage, I think. It doesn't really add anything to, to the movie, but I guess they needed more footage. I don't know. Now, after a riveting speech, Sharkula emerges from the water, wings spread and feasts upon the girl. <laughs> you see some blood, some close-ups, and then a bloody limb left on the beach. How could they have made this better? It's definitely a scene to behold. Like they're just going with it with this puppet shark, right? I mean, not much else you can do for a low budget shark movie, honestly. I like the bloody arm laying on the beach and the bloody leg. At least they used some props in this one. They could have used some more blood. I don't know, splattering on the rock behind her as she's being eaten or something. Have some guy in the background throwing blood, you know, as the camera picks it up. I am going to give this one and a half bloody slashes out of five because it needs more blood, honestly. But still a solid kill. Very cheesy, though you didn't really see much of the shark biting her. I would have loved to see like maybe like the puppet just bite her neck. May have some blood run down. Something like that would have given an extra point. Not as good as the first kill because the drunk guy made it even better. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. So there's two hippie types relaxing in a car after having a nice romp in the sack in, in their vehicle, you know, enjoying the ocean view, even though they're nowhere near an ocean, but the movie tries to make it seem like they are near the ocean. Now you don't see any of the action, so I'm sorry, no boobs, I know. All right, minus, minus a slash for that, right? Now something's wrong with the engine and the car doesn't start. So the guy has to get out and fix the car himself because he's the dude. I think it's finally had it. So as this guy is uh, trying to figure it out and not call a tow truck, I don't know if cell phones exist in this movie or what year it takes place in, I couldn't tell you. As he's about to fix this car, he hears a sound off in the distance coming from the water around these bushes. Leaving his girlfriend in the car, he goes to investigate what's making these sounds. He wanders to the ocean front and sees glowing eyes staring back at him from the water. Sharkula leaps from the water bites down on the guy's head. CG water splashes. It's, it's a very, it's, it's amazing CG, okay? And the giant shark head bites down on the guy's head, pulls him into the water, and then Dracula then swoops down and kidnaps the female. <laughs> How could they have made this kill better? That's the question. This scene is almost perfect to a T, right? It's hilarious with the giant puppet shark head and fake water splashing up and just clapping down on the guy's head, the fake ocean that's not there. I feel like Sharkula is supposed to be this massive shark, but this dude looks like he's looking down at like a pond or something. The only thing that it could have made this better is probably more blood, more fake blood. You know, if I'm watching a shark movie, there needs to be limbs and blood and splatters and stuff like that, okay? That's what makes shark horror movies so good. It could have cropped out his head, make it look like it got bitten off or something, you know, make it like a little CG squirt. The effect of the puppet shark, excellent, excellent. But I like this scene. It's a good, solid, cheap shark kill. I would say three and a half bloody slashes out of five. Almost perfect, but not quite. John has been weirded out by what's going on in this town. I'm telling you, man, I just don't like it. Something weird is going on around here. Something suspicious is happening, which leads him to investigate around the house where they're staying at. Seeing Renfield, who is the panty sniffer in the, the little the minion, the little minion for, to Dracula. In every Dracula movie, there has to be that like weird minion dude that always obeys him. John sees Renfield being choked out by Dracula and notices that Dracula has no reflection in the mirror. This kind of freaks him out. The scene is kind of quite amazing because you also see like a, a fake bat fly at this dude. Yes. I think it's on a string or actually might be CG. But being sneaky, John ventures into the basement and finds the missing girl from the hippie car who is now turned into a vampire. Appearing like a rat from the shadows, Renfield shanks John in the stomach with a knife, murdering him, killing one of the main characters in this movie. I was kind of shocked because I thought John was the main character in this movie. The old switcheroo. Fake blood oozes from his mouth and Renfield delivers this line. It's one of the best lines in the movie. Blood for you, bitch. And then afterwards, you see him later in the movie, John's body being feasted upon by Sharkula. How could they have made this better? Well, I enjoy the fake blood they used, you know, showing the knife enter the stomach, well, kind of enter the stomach for what they could do. And the lead up to the scene with Renfield being bitch slapped by Dracula, and then Dracula, the bat, attacking him and sucking his blood. 
was just glorious. And even though it's later in the movie, we do see the guy's body being eaten by Sharkula, which is a nice touch. I mean, for what it is, I don't think I'd change a thing. Maybe putting the feeding scene in sooner than later. I like this one. I would rank this four bloody slashes out of five for the kill. And then an extra one for the line delivery from Renfield. What are your thoughts? Let me know. Renfield dies. That sniveling guy that killed John. Blood for you, bitch. Nothing better than seeing a sniveling character get what's coming to him. And once you watch this movie, you'll agree with me. Renfield fucks up with giving Arthur too much information, Arthur being John's friend, about John dying and what's going on around this town. Dracula is furious with him. But not before I deal with you. So he throws him to the missing hippie girl who's now a vampire and the hippie girl slashes his throat so that she can feed. It's like a tiny slit, it's just like a <laughs> It's one of my favorite kills in this movie because I couldn't stand this guy. What I liked about it, he died. That's it. How could they have made this better? More gore with the throat being cut. Mate, there's like, there's like more blood maybe. Just... Now I wanted to see his head get ripped off or something other than the little throat slit just because I hated him so much in this movie. If they would have spent most of the budget on this kill, probably would have been more satisfying. It felt kind of rushed. One bloody slash out of five. It was not as good and not as cheesy as the other ones, but I'm glad Renfield's dead. So we can move on. Dracula is now tired of being a pawn to the great Sharkula, the great blood beast of the sea. And Dracula wants Sharkula gone. So he hires Arthur and Mina to help him kill Sharkula. Well, not so much hire, but promises to let them go and let them live if they do help him. It will work out. Trust me. You know, using Mina as bait so Arthur can stab Sharkula in the eyeball and kill it, because I think Sharkula's weakness is its eyeball. I guess. And the plan goes well. Arthur battling Sharkula with a stick. And eventually Sharkula is lit on fire and burned to death. I'm counting this as a kill. I was sad to see Sharkula go. Something weird though does happen in this scene to Dracula transforming him into the new Sharkula, I think. What is happening to me? Cause afterwards he has gills on his neck. I'm not sure what the fuck's going on anymore. It, it's, it's all so much, okay. Dracula now is a sea beast. That's the gist that I got from this scene. Arthur and Mina, they did their part for Dracula or Sharkula now. Dracula goes back on his word and wants to keep Mina for himself and to kill Arthur. Sharkula is defeated. How could they have made this better? They couldn't have, honestly, I don't think so. It was a perfect B horror movie scene. You had the actors battling the Sharkula puppet, the CG fire, the weird twirly effect you get in uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. It was, how you would say chef's kiss. It, it's so tempting to just give it full value for what it is. The scene is really good. It's quite a masterpiece for B movie. And I'd probably give it four bloody slashes out of five if I had to. It's nearly a perfect scene, nearly. Dracula now has gills. He is now Sharkula, but is no longer the master to his cult followers. They let him know about it. You are not our master anymore. So Dracula, Sharkula, he's enraged to hear about this insubordination. And so he snaps these two guards' necks. Hey. And they drop like dead fish. It's a quick kill. Nothing great about it, uh, but the bodies keep rolling. Honestly, probably half a bloody slash. It's just it's just quick, right? It's nothing that's gonna get, get your rocks off. It's just to add to the body count. I mean, how could they made it better? Blood, some effects, head popping. I think it's just supposed to be a quick kill, right? Arthur and Mina, the girl, are now on the run and they end up in the basement of Dracula's house where they find his sexy concubine chained up and now threatening to drink their blood. Get me fresh blood! She's a thirsty lady, I don't blame her, but too many snarky remarks ends up getting her stabbed in the heart by Arthur and Mina. Her screams echo through the town for her master, alerting him to her location. <laughs> Not much blood was used, if any. I think they CG the tip out of that steak or maybe they, it wasn't CG. I couldn't tell, honestly. The frame rate is so bad, it's hard to understand or see what the hell's going on in this movie. But the actress, the one getting shanked, really gives her all in this scene. Hats off to her. More blood is always good. I swear that's what all these scenes need is just a little bit extra. Just, just a little bit extra. I'd rate this two bloody slashes out of five. 
For me, the kill was meh, but the actress in this really sold it for me to that two point. I, I felt like she really gave it her all. Kill number 10, the final kill. Dracula, who is now Sharkula, tracks down Arthur and Mina. Nothing can help you now. He craves Mina to be his bride for all eternity and attacks Arthur. <laughs> Mina finds out that she has some power or a hold over Dracula for some reason. I think it's his love for her. That's what gives her the power over him and tells him to let Arthur go. Powerless against her words, he does so and kind of like cowers away a little bit. Cannot resist your command. And professes his love. Arthur though, armed with two tiny sticks across, pushes it onto Dracula's or Sharkula's forehead and burns it into his skull. Flashy effects happen and all of a sudden he just goes poof, disappears into nothingness. Arthur and Mina are now free and he is no more. How could they have made this better? Well, the use of random effects used to make him disappear was pretty great, not gonna lie. All right, the tiny wooden cross made of sticks that killed him really adds an extra layer of cheese to this because it's not a cross they're like oh we don't have a cross anywhere let's just like put two two fucking twigs together to make a cross right that that works why not i feel like this is an already perfect scene i'm gonna have to go with three bloody slashes out of five i know it's a little high but hear me out it's comical. It's such a cheesy way to kill him off. The gills, the acting, the little sticks that killed him. It was great, it was comical. I enjoyed it. So which kill ranks at number one as the best kill in Sharkula? John dying with a beautiful line delivery of Blood for you, bitch. Do you guys agree with this being number one? Or do you disagree? Should this be higher? Should this be lower? Or something else takes its place? Let me know. Sharkula is one of those movies you need to watch in order to understand its brilliance. Almost like Velocipasture. That movie was very self-aware. And I feel like Sharkula or these kind of movies are pretty self-aware with how they know that it's pretty low budget. This is a low budget horror movie that you can find over on Tubi right now. Please watch this movie and let me know your thoughts on this. And uh, that is all we have time for. If you enjoy this kill ranking, be sure to leave a comment, leave a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. New videos out every week. As well, we stream over on Twitch, which we are live right now doing this live. As always, I'll see you in the next spooky video.